Welcome to the EASA Certification and Design Organizational Workshop. Today I'm going to be giving you an update on the Design Organizational Approval Department. My name is Julian Hall and I'm the head of the Design Organization and ETSO Department. So the content of today's presentation is in three main tranches. The first one is on organizational changes, where I'll be talking about the CT Adjust program and changes to the DOA department or the CT3 department. Secondly, we'll be looking at DOA statistics and there we'll be looking at the trends for design organizational approvals and the trends for alternative design organizational approval procedures. The third and last, we'll be looking at COVID and the impact of COVID as challenges and also DOA optimization and SMS and ISMS requirements which will be introduced into the regulations in the very near future. So the first thing I would like to talk about today is the Certification Adjust Programme. We were in a position to try and improve the efficiency and way we worked within the Certification Directorate. And we had five main objectives to try and achieve. Firstly, we wanted to try and find a way of managing our expert resources to achieve critical size of expert resources. To do this, we ended up merging two of the previous departments the General Aviation Department, the CT2 Department, and the Rotorcraft Department, the CT3 Department. This allowed us to co-locate the resources within one department. In addition, we had to look at synergies. Synergies across the CT2, General Aviation and the Rotorcraft domains to ensure we had a consistent approach in how we dealt with RPAS, remotely piloted systems, innovation, and changes to technology. The third objective was to try and have the leanest organisational structure we could possibly find. And to do this, we have found a way of reducing the number of departments within the Certification Directorate by one, and also reducing the number of sections by one. This reduction of overheads allows us to focus our resources onto the more critical technical elements that we need for our job. The fourth area was to try and ensure that the policies within the Certification Directorate were located in one common area and applied logically across all of the departments. To do this, we want to, wanted to ensure that we have certification policy, handbooks, procedures, work instructions, all located in one area. And to do this, we have done that via the CT5 department, a new department that is going to look after those areas. In addition, we had similar concerns about knowledge management being spread across the different product safety lines. And once again, we've centralized these in one department, the certification CT5 department. So what I would like to show you now is firstly, the outcome of the CT Adjust program, plus the recently applied CT mobility of managers. And this chart is valid as of January the 1st, 2021. And what I would like to do is to start from the left-hand side of the chart with CT1, which is the large aeroplanes department. In the large aeroplanes department, there has been no significant change, but we do have a new head of department. The new head of department is Mr. Michael Singer, and he takes over from Ludovic Aron, who was the previous incumbent. Ludovic, for your information, is now our EASA representative in Washington, D.C., where he started on September the 1st. As I mentioned before, the CT2 department that you see is the result of merging the CT2 general aviation and CT3 rotorcraft departments into one department. That department is general aviation and vertical takeoff and lift. This new department is managed by David Solar. The CT3 department was formerly known as CT6 and is headed up by myself, its design organizations and ETSO. There are no fundamental changes to the structure of the department. Nevertheless, I would like to highlight that the former manager, Mr. Marcus Gurneman, is now a full-time deputy director supporting Rachel Deschler in her duties as certification director. For certification CT4, we have Environment and Propulsion Systems, which is now managed by Frank Steffens. Frank Steffens moved from the International Cooperation Department in SM Directorate this summer and has taken over from Michael Singer on that role. 
And the final department is the CT5 department. In the CT5 department, as I indicated before, we've centralized our policies and we've centralized the rulemaking and they're also responsible for safety information and safety directives. In addition, for consistency, we have the chief experts and the chief PCMs reporting directly to the CT5 head of department, who is Mr. Dominic Roland. There is also a functional link between the chief experts and the chief PCMs to Mr. Alain Loire. Mr. Alain Loire is now reporting directly to the executive director and is the chief engineer of the agency. And last but not least, we have the director's office which is headed up by Gregory Liev, and he is responsible for supporting the Certification Director on all manners related to business in the Certification Directorate. Moving slowly on to the department of CT3, we also underwent a management mobility change in accordance with local policy for rotation of managers in October the 1st of this year. So it's a very recent change. We have a new management team, and underneath myself as head of department, we have Juana Anton, who's taken over as CT31 for design organizations, policy and procedures. Manfred Reichel, who is in CT32, a section manager for design organizations and outsourcing. And finally, Francesco uh, Caradai, who is CT33, section manager for European technical standard orders. On the right hand side of this slide, you can see a, a, a small overview of the DOA resources within the team. Within the department, we have approximately 36 staff and supplementing those 36 staff that are local are a number of National Aviation Authority resources, which are part of our partnership agreements with National Aviation Authorities. The main providers of resources are the Austria, the Netherlands, Italy and Germany. In addition, we do have work which we work together on partnership contracts with Poland, Ireland, France, Spain and the Czech Republic. I'd like to move now to the statistics in DOA and I wanted to have a, a look and, and review with you the trends year by year over the last six years for the DOAs under active EASA surveillance. As you can see, there's a trend increasing until 2020 when we reached a peak of 376 organizations. Following that in 2021, there is a reduction to 323. This reduction was due to the fact that we had to implement the concept and the agreement of Brexit, which meant that 60 EASA design organization uh, approvals located in the United Kingdom had to be canceled. So there is a reduction in the number of organization approvals of approximately 15%. Nevertheless, the workload has not reduced in the same linear manner because many of those approvals were smaller design organization approval holders who had a lower activity. On the right hand side of the slide, you can see a split of scope of work regarding to the DOA approvals that we have. So the vast majority of DOA approvals we have are STC, Supplemental Type Certificate Holders, and Repair. Coming up very closely in second, we have a large number of major change and repairs and Type Certificate Holders. So even though we had the impact of Brexit, we do notice that there is a continued upward trend for new applications in the field of design organizational approvals. And as you can see, the trend hovers around 30 new approval applications per year. This year, we've already reached 16 new applications, which is on track to reach the figure of around 30 by the end of the year, which indicates a very steady growth in the field of design organizational approvals. Just as a, a recap for many of you who may not be aware of it, there was the signature of the technical implementation procedures under the bilateral between the CAA UK and the European Aviation Safety Agency, which took place on the 17th of May, 2021, accepting each other's certification systems. 
This map is just to show you very briefly that there is a, a, a relatively even distribution of DOA holders in Europe. The vast majority are in France and Germany, and obviously the UK has no EASA-located uh, DOA approval holders anymore. And finally, on statistics, so just, uh, it would be remiss of me not to mention alternative procedures to design organisational approval and their trends. We do see a trend of new applications reducing over time. So over the last six years, there is a slow reduction, but there is still a gradual increase in number of ADOA holders that we are responsible for. And at present, it is standing at 244 organisations. The third section of the presentation today, today looks at the challenges. And the principal challenge we've all had to face has been COVID. For the industry and for the authority, this has been a huge challenge and it's cascaded through the aviation industry and down to design organisational approvals. The first three bullets on this slide are related to COVID. We have had to, in the agency, adapt our way of working to WebEx, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, home office, to adapt and to work with the new issues that we have with COVID. On top of that, we've had to introduce new ways of working, novel techniques. One of those is remote auditing and remote witness witnessing. There is a separate presentation on this, which will be covered by Mr. Claudio Caruso during this workshop, and we would advise that you have a look at that. There's some very interesting, pragmatic experience from our last months in the COVID crisis. The third bullet point is looking slightly more positive. Following the vaccination programme being so successful and the lifting of certain travel restrictions, we are being able to get more into our normal business to do missions and surveillance audits of organisations. So we are returning to a new normal. The last two bullet points cover DOA optimization and SMS and ISMS implementation. So firstly, I'd like to cover the challenges of DOA optimization. Now, DOA optimization is an internal EASA efficiency gain program. It is part of the wider EASA transformation exercise. And what we're looking at is four main streams. Stream one looks at the roles and responsibilities of all the staff in the DOA department and tries to find efficiencies and simplifications wherever possible. Stream two is reviewing our procedures and processes, trying to remove redundancy, enhance efficiency, and also make that critical link between certification of the product and the design organizational approval itself. The third stream, which is arguably the most complex and difficult, is the IT tools and the digital transformation. As part of the overall agency program on Coral, we are working closely to try and improve and regenerate our IT tools to facilitate the business within the DOA department. And the last bullet point talks about alternative procedures to DOA and ETSO, where we are looking at making efficiency improvements and taking lessons learned from the previous three streams to enhance the way we do business. The final challenge I'd like to talk about today is the challenge of SMS and ISMS introduction in DOA. The upcoming SMS requirements mean uh, at the moment we have a, a projected plan of expected adoption in Q1 2022. The applicability will be one year later in QU, Q1 2023, and findings will be raised for non-compliance. Organisations would have a further two years until Q1 2025 to close any related findings. In addition, for the upcoming ISMS requirements, the Information Security Management System requirements, they expected to be adopted at the moment in Q2 or Q3 2022, with applicability one year later in Q2, Q3 of 2023. Findings will be raised for non-compliance in these cases as well. And very much like SMS, there will be an additional time period for organizations to close findings an additional one year as opposed to the two years for SMS, and that will be until Q2, Q3 of 2024. The third and final bullet point that is on this slide is addressing pilot projects. 
We understand that the challenges for introduction of SMS and ISMS will be quite difficult for both the industry and for our own team as DOA surveyors. Therefore, we will be selecting certain pilot projects with the industry to learn best practice, the most pragmatic way of implementation, and also to take a lessons learned and to have a scalable introduction of the new requirements. And my final slide today is just to remind you all of how we can communicate with you and to share information and to highlight that we now have a, a new newsletter, which is the Design and Certification Newsletter, the first one which is issued in March 2021, and the next one will be issued in December 2021. If you wish to access this, you can subscribe, subscribe to this online at the newsroom and events on the IASA website, which is shown on the slides. And lastly, for next year, we are hoping that we can get back to a much closer normality that we're used to, which means we are hoping to have a minimum of a hybrid event or preferably a full face-to-face -face meeting in 2022 to replace the DOA certification workshop Webex version uh, online event that we have this year. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention.